Okay, welcome to the first short lecture on material balance, especially applied to iron and steel making. My name is Vishwanath uh, Noorani. I'm a professor working at the Center of Excellence in Steel Technology, Department of Metallurgical Engineering and Material Science, IIT, Bombay. Okay. So as I told you, we are looking at material or mass balance as applied to iron and steel processing. So, if you look at processing or processes, here we are talking about processes. Basically, we are referring to chemical processes where atoms combine to form some new, you know, molecules carbon and oxygen to form carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or Fe2O3 ion oxide to form iron, silicon to form silicon oxide like that. We are talking about chemical changes and this we achieve it, we can achieve it through process which we call it chemical processes. And uh, specific iron and steel making, we can broadly classify, again, this is true for other processes as well, batch process and continuous process. Batch process, for example, for example, basic oxygen furnace where the hot metal from the liquid, uh, from the blast furnace, for example, is uh, treated with oxygen so that some of the impurities like carbon, silicon, phosphorus, manganese, some of these things can be oxidized and brought to a desirable level. So here we do these material balance. Or balance as such you look at, you can also call it conservation. This conservation is also something very generic. It means uh, this is one of the laws which is used across the fields of discipline. Not only in science and engineering, but also for example, all those places or ecology, all those places, balancing or conservation is used. So if you look at batch process, we have, there is something which was there initially, you put in some things. Of course, during the process, you may add something and there may be something which may get out of the system. So what is fed? and what is lost during the process and what is there at the end. So, based on this, we can make a material balance. Again, in this lecture, when I say material balance, it is basically referring to a macroscopic scale at the scale of the reactor. Actually, material balance can be done or the conservation can be done even at the smaller scale and that's what we do when, when we want to know a detailed understanding of a particular system we do conservation at the scale you know smaller scale anyway i won't go into those but when it comes to a reactor so you can express for example if a basic oxygen furnace i can express it for one heat that being one process you understand one one batch process one batch or if you know that in 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 one heat suppose you are producing let me say some 95 tons 
but still I can always express it per ton of steel. So also express it per ton of steel. In the steel industry, many of the parameters comes to basic of furnace, they often express ton of steel produced, but you can always you know multiplying by some factor depending on how much is there in one batch you can always convert it to corresponding to the scale of the furnace similarly the other process which is a continuous process you feed in things through the inputs blast furnace is example where you charge iron ore the coke from the top and you inject blast from the bottom hot blast then uh, gases go out and slag and the metal is uh, tapped out and if you maintain steady condition at the input input you know conditions you steady you typically expect that the process will come to a steady state. Of course, it, it need not be true. Again, it depends on what is your objective, what is that you are looking for. For example, when it comes to blast furnace, alkali in the blast furnace, as many of you may know, alkalis when it comes to the bottom of the furnace, they tend to cooperate. So all of them don't get into the slack. They tend to evaporate. But by the time they reach at the top of the furnace, they condense. If they condense, they cannot go out through the gas. If they evaporate, they cannot go out completely through the slack. So in other words, through the raw material, they keep coming into the furnace, but they don't go out as much as they get in into the furnace. So hence, they slowly get accumulated in the furnace. So in that case, of course, still we can do material balance, but we need to look at what is getting accumulated also inside the furnace. However, in most of the other case, we can do a, you know, first analysis when it comes to co-create or when it comes to, you know, iron ore to be charged. Some of these things you can do an analysis assuming the furnace to be at steady state. So here, again, I will give an example from last furnace, assuming it to be a steady state with an input and an output. So using these input and output, we can conduct material balance. And, you know, things which is not known can be estimated using this material balance. Or some that material balance can be used to find out something which has not been accounted for. So in a way, material is like you know account make maintaining accounts you can do this balance even that's why economics also you do the balance you 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 do a cash flow so it's the same thing what we do when it comes to material balance and again the basis in blast furnace it, it can be of course what is the material produced per second? So you can do material balance per second based in minute or hour or day. Or, you know, it is done also per ton of what produced. Like, you know, what is the product, the important product per ton of that. So hot metal, the pig iron is an important product coming out of blast. So you can also per ton of hot metal produced. So, what is material balance? As I told you, material balance is 
it is actually in principle it is as simple as some counting some apples and oranges it is actually as simple as that in principle for example imagine that you have some head Two oxygen. This may be CO. So, like that, basically in a reactor, these kinds of things, of course, it's not that only you put in as only apples and oranges, you can even put packets. For example, I may put iron oxide, which is a packet of iron and oxygen atoms, and it may count as. So whatever it is, basically we do of these individual elements and you can do the counting. Here of course we were doing in ones because it's a small number. If it is much more you can do it in tens, you can express in dozens, you can express in hundreds. Of course, you can also do, you know, weights of apples, especially if the weight of each apple is same, which is true when it comes to chemical species, each atom weighs the same. So you can also count in terms of weights, it is also possible. So this is exactly what we do with material balance. Only thing is, when it comes to counting atoms, we have to count. Our our counting is, is quite large. You you know that if you take a gram mole, that means if you take atomic weight corresponding to atomic weight, that many grams. For example, oxygen O O has sixteen. Grams. So if you have O two, for example, thirty two grams of O2, then it will contain this O2 molecules will be Avogadro number which you know, you know is 10 to the power of 23 that is the order. So that many number of atoms will be there 6 into 10 to the power of 23 atoms will be there if you have 32 grams of O2. So hence we can actually count in terms of Avogadro number or we say we are counting using gram moles. So it's another way of expressing the number of atoms. Of course, we can also multiply by 1000 and we can call it kilogram moles. And of course, as I told you, you can actually count in weight itself because each atom has the unique weight. So you can always convert gram moles to, you know, grams or kilograms by multiplying by the weight of one, one atom and as I told you Avagra atoms weight of that is equal to the atomic weight so you will be able to count you know you can convert from number to weight etc so this is what we are going to do when we see material balance and again another important uh, principle which we 
use is uh, the all gases behave ideally that's what we assume actually when we look at the temperature and the pressures we operate this is a reasonable assumption top of it there is always a scale that we conduct this balance there is always a error associated with whatever we do and we know that uh, assuming this ideal gas behavior is not going to affect uh, rather you know that is going to be negligible if, if you you know if you know ideal gas so we are not going to bother the non-ideality part of it so we can assume that gases are all ideal and we know from Okay, where it operates pure carbon, which is can be either a fuel or reductant, rather it acts as both. So this is simple. Okay, that's what is illustrated here. So we have in front of the tier there's something called the raceway. So it reacts there in that zone. So we are injecting the hot blast and the by blast, dry blast with no additions will contain 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. See again, as I told you, the amounts of gas are expressed in normal meter cube or normal liters. Yeah? Yeah, okay, we come back. normal liters uh, sorry for that similarly the composition of gas are also expressed in volume fraction that means 79 percent is by volume 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen and using the ideal gas law it is obvious that this will also correspond to the mole percentage or mole fractions. So hence gases by default are expressed in volume fractions on the other hand when it comes to condensed phases liquids or solids unless it is specified you can assume that it is 8%. For example, when 
the steel is 0.1 percent carbon means by by default it corresponds so we have carbon 100 percent so these are the inputs and the, the, what we are having we again know from thermodynamics that what comes out from the raceway in front of the blast furnace tube is, is basically CO and nothing much happened to nitrogen so nitrogen comes out as it is. So hence what has been given is we have been given how much amount of air is being fed. So let us take this is of per second because I am interested in finding out how much gas is actually flowing through the Bosch of the blast furnace. So it's a volumetric flow, suppose I am interested. So I can convert that per second. Once I know the production, that's exactly what has been done 1200 per ton, 3000 per ton per day, and then I can convert the time into seconds, and you will see that it is 41. 0.67 normal meter cube of air per second is what is sent into the furnace. What we need, need to find out is how much carbon will be burnt at this is point and correspondingly how much CO and how much nitrogen will be coming out. Of course, it is obvious from here that since nothing happens to nitrogen, whatever nitrogen you put in that has to come. So if you look at, I was talking about apples, oranges and some green apples and red apples. Here we are talking about nitrogen, oxygen and carbon. So basically, like I was telling you, we need to balance the apples, the oranges. We need to balance the nitrogen, the oxygen, total, you know, whichever packet they are in. Here it is O form. When it comes here, it is CO form. So it's a packet, as I told you. So we need to map them. And as I told you, we will count in terms of Avogadro number. So let us count the OO molecule. That means O2 packets. How many packets? So we know that it is 41.67 nanometer view. Out of that, 21% is our oxygen packets or OO molecule. Hence, I can, and we also know that one gram mole of the gas occupies 22.4 normal liters or 0.0224 nanometer cube. So, hence, I can correspondingly convert, and that corresponds to 390.6 gram moles of OO at OO molecule. And using one OO molecule, you can produce two CO molecules because one, you know, there are two O's. So you can make two packets of CO. So hence, if you have 390.6 gram mole, that is that much by that may have a number of O, you can make twice the amount using this, that is why 781.2 gram moles of CO. And to make one CO, you need one carbon. So hence, to make this much, you need so many moles of carbon. Now I know what is the weight of carbon, because one carbon, one gram mole of carbon is atomic weight, which is 12 grams. So hence, I can convert that into grams also. And similarly, you can also find out what is the moles of Nn. So you can see that this is what is the material balance expressed in terms of moles. So what we have done, if you look at, is basically we, we said the number of moles of CO is twice the number of moles of O2. Number of moles of CO has to be equal to number of moles of carbon and number of moles of N2 has to be same at the input and output. And now we can, you know, once we add all these things, we know how much CO has produced, how many gram moles of nitrogen. We can convert this back into normal meter cube. Remember, you put in only 41.67 and you got 50.42. This is because 
you have for one oxygen you have produced two co so hence the total number of molecules have got increased right so hence that is why in the gas phase you, you look at here the number of moles have increased correspondingly the volume has gone up and then if you know the temperature in the Bosch and pressure at the Bosch you can actually calculate what will be the actual volume of the gas in that region of course if you know the area of that zone cross section area you can even find out what will be the average velocity of the gas in that region Quite often it is a good practice to express all these things in the form of tables. Here for example I have expressed in the form of gram moles. Generally it is done uh, in industrial it is preferred to express in terms of kilograms so, or grams. You can, you can do it here also by correspondingly multiplying by atomic weight. However you can see that you know on the input side this is what this is oxygen this is nitrogen which is there in the air and this much carbon gram moles and you have produced so much amount of moles of Bosch gas the N2 is so much and CO so much okay so in the next module I will talk about I will continue this material balance with two examples, one from blast furnace, the other from BOF. So for the time being, let me stop it.